So in this video, I'm going to show you a real problem that a client came to us with and how we solved it so that you can benefit from this, have this sort of in your tool bag approach of doing this. We're going to use a formula called the indirect function. It's one that most people who are using Excel have never heard of and never use, but it's really, really useful. And you'll see how powerful it is in the example today. So what we had is, or what a client had was a list of temperatures that were exported from a software platform. And so you can see there are 4,418 rows of data. These are temperature readings that were taken once every hour over a series of days. And so what they needed is they needed this data to be displayed horizontally instead of vertically in one whole list. So they wanted every day to be a column and that column to have 24 rows in it for the 24 hours of the day. So you can kind of imagine this then getting um, outlined here. So to give you help give you a visual, I'll put some dates up here. So let's just say they started in March. We got 180, turns out to be 184 columns. Um, so they need 184 columns of data. All I did is just typed in the first date there and then over here, you know, plus one and copy that formula out 184 columns. Okay, so each of these needs to be uh, needs to contain the data for that day, which will be 24 rows. So they want to have 24 rows right here for the 24 hours on March 1st, then 24 rows for March 2nd, 24 rows for March 3rd, and so on. So to do this manually would mean coming down, finding whatever that 25th data point is, selecting 24 records, cutting them, pasting them up here, and repeating that 184 times, which would take forever and be really tedious. So what I'm going to do is show you how you can do it in just a couple of minutes, and what's even more cool about it is once we have this set up, when they download a new export of temperature data, they're literally just going to paste it in here and everything will be automated because it's all using these formulas. So it'll be really cool, really helpful. And this is just one way that you can use the indirect formula. Once you see it used this way, hopefully it'll open up your mind to different ways you could use it to solve your own problems. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first step is going to be really easy because for March 1st, this first set of data, all I need to do is do equals and select the temperature uh, data point over there, copy that, and bring it down 25 rows. Okay, so right there would be, I can select that, and you see at the bottom, oh, 25, so I need 24, rather, I need 24 data points, so now, boom, got a count of 24. So now I have the first 24 hours, March 1st. Uh, if I were to do this manually, my next step would be to put an equals here, and then if I was doing it manually with old, like, regular reference formulas, then I would put an equals there and then select the 27, uh, 27th row, which is going to be that next data point. Um, <clears throat> okay, and so that's going to be 71.8, so A27. Now what we want to do is replicate that A27, but again, have it be automated, have it be one formula that we write that we can copy throughout this whole table, all 184 columns, all 24 rows, and have it do everything right away. So that is going to be the indirect formula. So remember, we're trying to replicate A27. So that is exactly what the indirect formula allows us to do. So I'm going to type in equals indirect, and then we're going to put in this sort of magic here. Okay, so what this is asking for, it wants you to put in the reference. So for example, if I put in quotes A27 and close that and hit enter, it's going to give me the same answer as before. That's how the indirect works. But what I want to do is instead, I want to have this number change automatically. And that's where the indirect uh, formula power kind of comes in. So I'm going to do uh, A and a cell up here where we can type in a number, and you'll see how this works in just a minute. Okay, so now when I type in 26, or actually, let's just say uh, 27 should be. All right, so I'm going to type in the number 27, and you can see now it's pulling that same number right here. Just to demonstrate that that's what it's doing, I'm going to put like a weird number. So you see that, that showing up there. Okay, so this is going A, and that has to be in quotes, then the AND symbol, which is joins the two together, and D1, and so what it's going to do is it's going to take the 27, it's going to take the contents of cell D1 and pass them into this formula. So now it's basically converting this into A27. Now that's cool, but if I just copy that down, that's not going to do us any good whatsoever, right? So we need it to be a little bit smarter than that. So we'll get to that uh, in our next step. So what I'm going to do in column B, there's a reason I left a blank column here, is I'm going to type in a 1, and I'll just do plus 1 formula just to come down. Uh, this is literally just getting the number 1 through 24 over here, okay? And now what we can do is modify our formula. So instead of just being cell D1, I'm going to move this out of our way. Instead of just being cell D1, I want it to be D1 plus B3, basically this number 1 over here. 
So now I need to change this actually to 26 because we're using this plus one method. Now that I have that in place, once I add my dollar signs for cell reference, you'll see that I can just copy this formula all over the place. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I don't want the uh, rows to move in the D1 reference. So I'm gonna put a dollar sign in front of the row number. And it's the exact opposite for column B, for this B3. I want the rows to move, I don't want the columns to move. So I'm gonna put the dollar sign there and that fixes it. Now as I copy this down, that is going to get me uh, what I need going from the first hour on March 2nd all the way through the 24th. Okay, so that has just automatically populated that. Now what's really awesome is that if I just type in plus this cell plus 24, because we know since we're using 24 units of data for every um, column, we're just going to add 24 to that every time. Just write that one formula, which is just adding 24 to the previous column. And I can copy that out, my 184 rows. And now... This one indirect formula that we wrote is going to work literally for the entire spreadsheet. So I'm just going to copy it all the way over. 184 rows. Almost there. <laughs> all right, here we go. So I'll copy it and paste there, just using enter to paste. Okay, so now that that is pasted, this is literally doing everything automatically over the entire sheet. So just to review that really quickly, all we did, uh, other than just really simple formulas in Excel, like using the plus sign to add uh, to a number in a cell, really the only interesting formula we're using is indirect. And you can see it's actually really simple. Uh, so we're using, we're fixing our column A because we're always pulling data from column A. Now, if the column was moving, we could also do some math in that one. But in this case, A is fixed. So it's A and whatever number's in here plus the row over here. So if we come down, for example, uh, let's let's just jump over to one right here. So what this is going to do um, in this random sort of cell we've highlighted here is it's going to do A and the number 50 plus 5. So this is A55. So if I were to replace this formula, which remember the 70.7, .7, if I were to replace that with A55, notice it doesn't change, 70.7, because .7, it's the same exact thing. But the beauty of it is now we're able to do it automatically throughout the whole spreadsheet. And once they get a new data set, they can just paste it in here and all of this will be completely automated. Okay, so I hope you found that interesting and helpful, how you can use the indirect function. Again, there's tons of other ways you can use it, including when you're referencing other tabs. If you want me to make some other videos on useful ways that I've used this formula in the past, just let me know in the comments below. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.